It is one of my main goals of this channel to end some misconceptions about the late Roman Empire, for there are many not only misconceptions, but outright wrong beliefs associated with that fascinating time. For example, we already debunked a common misconception, namely that Rome became a backwater town in the 5th century, which could not be further from the truth as I showed in this video here. In fact, Rome was again the capital of the Western Roman Empire from 450 onwards until 476. Then we also debunked the notion that the Western Roman Empire fell in 476 and we also saw that the city of Rome continued unchanged after that supposed fall and fell into a sharp decline only after the Gothic Wars of the mid 6th century. And as you can imagine, there are of course also many misconceptions about Constantinople, the magnificent capital of the Eastern Roman Empire. And one of the biggest misconceptions is that Constantinople continued to be splendorous until its very end in 1453 and this is how it is very often portrayed in popular culture. But what if I told you that many of the ancient monuments of the city lay already in ruins as early as the 8th century AD? What if I tell you that already hundreds of years before Constantinople fell, the city was more a ruin field than a city, more cow pasture than an urban landscape? Let us then debunk another one of those misconceptions of the late Roman Empire that still persists so very strongly to this day. Popular culture has its way of fooling us, of fooling us into believing what we want to believe because we want it to be true. We see for example Roman soldiers in movies about the late Roman Empire such as St. Augustine, Agora or The Last Legion being portrayed as still wearing weapons and armor as in the early empire because we like to believe that. We see people wearing garments more alike to what we would have seen hundreds of years earlier because that is what we would identify as Roman. And consequently, it is also such with Constantinople. We see Constantinople in splendorous magnificence in movies depicting its fall in 1453. Why? Because it is more epic to see such a magnificent city than a ruined city with barely 50,000 inhabitants in 1453. Or in that scene from a cartoon, we see Constantinople from around the year 1000 depicted in the utmost possible splendor and grandiosity. But the reality was quite different, friends of late Roman history. Constantinople grew in size and population quite consistently from AD 330 onwards when Constantine made the city his new capital. By the mid 6th century in the time of Justinian, before the plague hit, the city had already grown to probably around half a million inhabitants, with varying estimates depending on which scholar you ask. The plague caused a sharp decline, but by the year 600, the city had recovered again. However, then something brutal happened in the first decades of the 7th century. By the time of Heraclius, the building activity in the city had grinded to a complete halt. Not a single building is recorded to have been built by this emperor. The reasons why are of course clear, namely that the Eastern Roman Empire was under attack from all sides. The Slavs had invaded the Balkans in the early 600s, the Persians had managed to capture large parts of Egypt, the Levant and Anatolia, and together with the Avars even threatened Constantinople itself in 626. Only the incredible efforts of Heraclius and his military victories restored these territories to the empire. But by the 640s, these territories were then lost for good to the Arabs, since the Persian war was so devastating 
that the military power of the Roman Empire had suffered greatly and was not able to withstand this new rising power. Also in the 7th century, the possessions of the Imperium in southern Spain were lost and by 698, Carthage had fallen to the rapidly expanding Caliphate. By the mid-8th century then, the Lombards overran Italy and the rule of the Eastern Roman Exarchs was ended. Only southern Italy still remained in Eastern Roman hands. So in a time span of only 150 years, the empire had contracted massively. This, of course, as we can imagine, had extremely detrimental consequences for the city of Constantine. And please like this video and subscribe so that you won't miss any future videos on the fascinating era of the late Roman Empire. And please consider supporting our work on Patreon or via YouTube membership because the long-term sustainability of this channel really depends on your support. YouTube is not really generous to such a niche topic about the late Roman Empire and the ad revenue from the videos is consequently really low. So in order to be long-term sustainable, I really need your financial support via Patreon or YouTube membership, as embarrassed as I am to say this. And of course, I'd like to thank everyone that supports this channel in any form. I hope that Majorian himself would be proud that you support a channel bearing his name. Gratias Tibiago Amici. The first huge disaster for the city came in the siege of 626, when the Persians, together with the Avars, besieged the city. In this siege, that spanned the time from June to July of 626, the aqueducts of the city were cut. The city was of course highly dependent on a large fresh water supply and consequently the baths of the city as well as the splendid fountains and nymphaea were abandoned. The baths of Achilles, of Constantine and of Zeuxippus empty. The great nymphaeum dried out. The aqueduct of Valens completely devoid of water. And this remained so until 768, when the aqueducts were repaired. However, most of the fountains and nymphaea were never restored to working order. And neither were the old Grand Imperial Baths. By 768, the Baths of Zeuxippus were overgrown by vines and had started to fall into disrepair. So we are astounded to find that Constantinople underwent a similar fate as Rome had only 90 years earlier. We remember that Rome was in surprisingly good condition until the siege of AD 537, when the Ostrogoths had cut the aqueducts of the city. The beautiful imperial baths and fountains then dried up, were abandoned and in later decades slowly started to fall into ruin. So 626 was the first disaster for Constantinople, but the second one came when Egypt fell to the Arabs after 642 AD. Constantinople had always been dependent on grain shipments from Egypt, the same way that Rome had been dependent on grain shipments from Africa. So for the very same reason why the population of Rome started to decline in the mid-5th century, namely because the province of Africa was lost to the Vandals and consequently the grain shipment ceased, for the very same reason Constantinople suffered the same fate 200 years later. The grain supply from Egypt would stop and consequently the population of the mighty city on the Bosphorus started to decline. In Rome's case, the decline first started gradually and became extremely sharp during the Gothic Wars. Had the city still had 500,000 inhabitants before the Vandal sack of 455, only 100 years later, Rome's population had shrunk to 30,000, over a factor of 10 decrease in such a relatively short time. Constantinople underwent a similar if not quite as drastic decline. We said that the city had half a million inhabitants in its prime, but after the cutting of the aqueducts and the stopping of grain shipments from Egypt, the population declined to probably only around 100,000 inhabitants. 
not quite as drastic as Rome's decline, but that still now meant that large parts of the city were deserted in the 8th century. The habitated areas were dispersed throughout the eastern parts of the city, so basically on the area of the old Byzantium, while the more western parts of the city lay mostly abandoned. By 750 the low point must have been hit, where most of the old imperial monuments and fora were starting to fall into ruin and many streets and buildings lay empty. During that time there were still sometimes chariot races in the Hippodrome a few times per year, but only with a ceremonial character instead of real sport. Even the basilica opposite of the Hagia Sophia by this time was a ruin. The baths of Achilles, of Constantine and Soixippus, as I mentioned before, were abandoned and dilapidated. So were the fountains and the Nymphaea. In that time, the Forum of Constantine became a market. The Senate House in the Forum was already disused and empty in that time. The Forum of Theodosius became a pig market, where instead of triumphal processions, pigs and cattle were being sold. A hay market was nearby, slaves were sold at the Tetrapylon, sheep at the Strategion, and the once beautiful temple of Helios, the space at which it stood known as the Amastrianum, was now a marketplace for donkeys and horses. Public executions were also carried out here. The Amastrianum had by 800 turned into a ruined field, the magnificent temple of Helios, a desolate reminder of grandiose days long past. After the year 800, a slow revival would start and some repairs were carried out. We mentioned that the aqueducts had been repaired in 768, but only to fill up the cisterns, not anymore the baths, fountains and nymphaea. They all remained abandoned and fell even more into ruin. In fact, apart from the repairing of the aqueducts, only churches and the imperial palace seem to have been repaired. In not one single document of that period is the repair of an imperial forum, an old imperial temple, an old bath, an old column or another building from the imperial age mentioned. From the time of Basil I there are pretty good surviving records of repairs having been carried out. Here too we are quite amazed not to find a single old imperial building being restored to old splendor, but only churches and the imperial palace. A strong earthquake in 869 badly damaged the city and further exacerbated the ruin of the old imperial monuments. So we see that even though Constantinople did not experience as drastic a decline as Rome after the Gothic Wars, the general feel of the city was fascinatingly not so dissimilar from the old Rome. Large uninhabited areas, abandoned old buildings that would fall into disrepair, cattle being pulled through the forums, pig markets in once splendorous imperial fora and many of the old temples and imperial buildings which shone brightly in the time of Constantine, of Julian and of Justinian were now already in ruins. And we shall see that even in later centuries the old monuments were not restored and therefore the romanticized version of a Constantinople before the sack of 1204 golden, beautiful, pristine and grandiose, never really existed in that form. Only from the time of Constantine until the early 600s was the city a really grandiose and impressive imperial city. But from the 700s onwards, many of the old monuments lay in ruins and were in fact never repaired. But now you might ask, how could the inhabitants of Constantinople let the old buildings fall into ruin? The answer is very similar to that for why it happened in Rome. Cultural estrangement and superstition. 
The later inhabitants of both rooms, the new and the old one, shared superstitions and an outright dislike of the old pagan past. And the grand imperial monuments were in many cases very pagan. Already by the time of Justinian, classical statues were thought to be inhabited by demons. And these superstitions and anti-pagan beliefs of the Christian inhabitants of course severely reduced the sympathy that the Constantinopolitans must have felt towards the decaying temples and statues of the old imperial times, since they were all so very pagan, so very antithetical to their own beliefs. This cultural estrangement from its own past made the people very unsympathetic towards their own heritage and thus every time an old imperial building collapsed it was only seen as a convenient source of building material and nothing more. In fact, the collapse of the old pagan monuments must have been welcomed by many. Thus, only churches were being repaired and the palace of the emperor itself and maybe the hippodrome at times as it still served as a public space. But the estrangement of the inhabitants of Constantinople and of Rome towards their own past is what actually made Rome and Constantinople both fall into such utter desolation and allowed the cities to become fields of ruins interspersed by the more modest dwellings of the medieval population. In future videos, we shall explore the state of Constantinople and its old monuments also during the Golden Age of Basil II, then shortly before and after the disastrous sack of 1204 and when the city fell to the Ottomans in 1453. Here too, we might be disappointed as to the state of the old monuments. This is an artist's impression of how the Forum of Arcadius probably looked in the year 1453. By that time, Constantinople was only a shadow of its former self. But that, friends of late Roman history, is a tale for another time. And if you are interested to learn how Rome fell into ruin, you can watch this video here in the upper right corner. But if you are more interested to learn about Constantinople in its prime, you can watch the other video in the lower right corner. I say thanks again to all friends of Roman history, gratias amici and bene valete.